very top of the channel uh, rather than that link that I had sent out earlier. But um, basically, welcome to everybody. This is our seminar on sustainability um, and res responsible recycling. Uh, we have a few people on the line with us today, um, some of our partners uh, in the industry that have been very helpful um, when we're trying to plan out projects, uh, mostly in wide format, but obviously in our other divisions as well. Um, so right now, I'll turn it over to Mike Graff, our president and CEO at Sandy Alexander, um, just for some informal introductions. Okay, thank you, Jeff, and uh, congratulations to Jeff. He put this entire thing together. He's worked very hard, and we did this on a pretty short notice, so great job. Um, I'm really proud of uh, the effort that Sandy's put into uh, environmental stewardship over the years. If anyone is aware, our history goes back to 2006. We started uh, wind power. We have most certifications in the industry. And we feel that we have a, a gift of a planet and it's our responsibility to take care of it. So we've always been in the forefront of that area. As far as this uh, format, um, I'm gonna apologize in advance to our wonderful clients that are, are joining right now. We have almost 60 people joining us. And normally, uh, Sandy Alexander is known for having our fancy parties around educational events. Uh, we've always enjoyed a, a good time. We work hard and we play hard. And uh, I apologize in advance that we don't have a party for you this, this time. But uh, hopefully uh, coming around to the solutions uh, for our virus and we will be back together again uh, with normal business next year. That said, um, I have to thank all of our guests that are gonna be presenting today. Uh, they put together a great program, we're very excited. As always, any program is only as good as the interaction with the audience. So we're gonna present, but we really encourage questions and answers and, and a conversation at the end. So with that, I'm not gonna steal any more time. I just wanna say thank you for your business. Thank you for your support, certainly in these difficult times and thank you for your interest uh, in this subject. It's near and dear to all of us. So with that, I'm not quite sure. I think we're going to start off with the uh, Sustainable Green Printing Partnership. So that's going to be Wendy. Okay, so I am going to share my screen. And um, I'm going to chat with you um, briefly about what the Sustainable Green Printing Partnership is and how the supply chain, which is you folks that are on the call, how that kind of fits into the grand scheme of things. So SGP stands for the Sustainable Green Printing Partnership. So it is an industry specific certification scheme, very similar to ISO 14001, um, but it is targeted at the printing industry and printing suppliers. It is a third party audited management system, which means that anybody who is an SGP printer has had uh, an independent order to come in, rooted around in their documents and looked around in their facility and chatted to people there to collect evidence that they meet all the criteria. So a lot of it is what goes on in the facility, but it extends beyond that. It is intended to be a scheme for printers who go above and beyond. This isn't intended to be a, a designation that just your average printer can attain. So if you're an SGP printer, it means that you've done, done something above and beyond uh, just what uh, an average printer will have done. So the scope of the sustainability, sustainability model for SGP includes the facility footprint so the printing, um, the energy use and uh, waste management handling system within the facility, but it also includes the supply chain, which is where you folks come into. So the supply chain includes the suppliers who are uh, kind of at the top of the food chain, uh, the facilities kind of in the middle, and then the, the customers are the uh, end point uh, somewhat uh, in this particular uh, log logistical chain. Contractors and transportation also play into the supply chain, but 
generally that's the inclusion within the SGP sustainability model. So why include the supply chain? So the facility, so Sandy, for example, as an SGP facility, they can control the activities within their facility um, and take efforts to minimize their environmental footprint. And you already heard that Sandy's been on that path for a number of years to uh, reduce the impact from their electricity usage, for example, by using wind power. There are other things that facilities do to reduce their energy usage. Um, they look at the hazardous, chemical, hazardous chemicals that they use and they work towards reducing them, waste um, and transportation. So they can control those things to a certain extent. But what they don't have control over, what they can't decide, they can't independently make the decisions, is things such as the, the substrate or the product that is being supplied to the customer. And those materials can have significant end of life implications. So depending on what the customer chooses, depends on the environmental impact of that particular product. So within the SGP model, uh, again, printers can't dictate to their customers what they're going to do, but it does require that they open a conversation with their customers and they educate their customers about the environmental impacts of the design of the products, about how they design their product, how they could improve the design of the product to improve the environmental footprint. So that's really what this particular session is today uh, that Jeff has organized and that we're all uh, participating in. And I'm sure that you are going to hear from the presenters who are still to come, um, what some of the aspects of their particular products are and, and how you can, by the, by the choices that you make for your product, how you can reduce the environmental impact. So what are some of the considerations that you can make in the choice of your product? So for example, can your product be reused? Um, sometimes, not very often, but occasionally, um, your product can be reused if they're in a store promotion, a show promotion or store signs. Um, and so you can choose materials that are durable and that will store well, so they don't get damaged and they don't get thrown out. Can it be easily recycled anywhere? So a lot of materials can be recycled, but there aren't necessarily the means to do that. And I think we're all very familiar now with how China shut the door on plastics and North America is scrambling to try and find other ways to recycle plastics. So it's not whether your product can be recycled, it's, it's whether those recycling streams are readily available anywhere. So retail stores, for example, typically they can recycle paper and cardboard as can residences. Um, and that's also typical of, of other businesses. Um, can your product be returned for recycling? So is it something that you could return back to your printer? And there are a few schemes like that for some fabrics that I'm aware of. So um, that can be a consideration in your choice of uh, materials. Um, because if your end product, if the, the way you've designed your product is that it can't be recycled, it's going to go to landfill or it will be incinerated. And those are the, those have the highest environmental aspects if, if that is the end destination for your materials. So what the considerations for the designers, for the, for the customers are what kinds of materials are used in the manufacture of the substrate? So for example, PVC, very toxic materials are used to manufacture that substrate. So even further up the supply chain, then there are um, pollution issues from emissions from those manufacturing facilities and also from their waste chemicals. Generally, anything that has chlorine in it, chlorine is just a nasty substance. It is persistent in the environment um, and it's, hangs around a long time and it moves up the food chain. So anything that has chlorine in it is generally not gonna be a great choice. Does your product design include mixed materials? So for example, foam board, where there is a, an outer material and an inner material, 
Again, that's going to be near impossible to recycle because it's very difficult to separate those materials, as is a multi-layer film. And uh, something else to think about is how easy is it going to be to ship your product? So the impact from shipping is very much dependent on the weight and the volume of your product. So if it can be folded or compressed into a smaller uh, envelope, and if it's light, then that reduces the impact for, our ship, for shipping your product. So those are just a few considerations for, um, for you as customers to think about when you're looking at what kind of product you're requesting and the impact at the end of the use of that particular material. So you as the, the print buyers, you're the point of contact, you're the, you're the decision makers for the product design, um, and that determines the environmental footprint, and also that then dictates the end of life consideration. So again, as I've, I've outlined, uh, outlined to you, and Jeff has already said, this is uh, an educational type of session that we're providing today. So it's just there to give you some points to think about as to how you can contribute to what um, Sandy in particular is doing to reduce their environmental impact. So just a brief overview, I'm gonna stop there. I think I've run out of my 10 minutes and Jeff is gonna cut me off if I ramble on too long. So uh, I appreciate your time and I will pass it back to you, Jeff. Thank you very much, Wendy. Um, so that was the SGP portion. Uh, now we're going to get into our alternative substrates section of the webinar. So we have uh, three of our partners. We have Competitive Edge um, and Bob O'Neill. We have Mohawk and we have Nina. Uh, so we're going to start with uh, Competitive Edge and Bob O'Neill, and I will turn it over to him right now. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, let me just uh, get a slideshow up here. So thank you for having me. Um, just uh, obviously a, a quick little representation of the mission statements and sustainability messaging from both Competitive Edge and Sandy Alexander. Uh, my name is Bob O'Neill. Um, I'm the president and team leader of Competitive Edge. And today's theme really is about reduce, reuse, and recycle. Three words that we've heard quite a bit about. Um, but we'll focus in on our channel and how it uh, affects our channel. So our, our focus as is, is Competitive Edge is really based on promoting products that have recycled content, meaning they had a past life uh, and or 100% blue bin recyclable materials, um, meaning that they'll have a future life and or products that have an overall lower carbon footprint than similar products or materials. So you have to be a little bit careful. I, I know um, that was spoken to a little bit earlier uh, in this call that you, you, know, you have many manufacturers claiming their products are recyclable, um, but reality is if it's not blue bin recyclable, curb, curbside blue bin recyclable, the odds of the material getting recyclable are really slim to none. Uh, and that's just the reality of the, the, the recycle world that we live in from the collection agencies and so on. If it's not truly designated as a recyclable, it will go into our landfills. So let's focus on uh, three material manufacturers uh, that are really doing the right things and helping to progress our channel in lowering our carbon footprint. And the key buzzwords during this presentation are as follows. FSC certification, SFI certification, LEED certification, and made in the USA. And we represent three products here, Dreamscape, Falcon Board, and Packwright, which I'll go into now. So Dreamscape, all products are made in the USA. Um, Kind of funny, they're right down the street from Sandy Alexander's New Jersey plant, really about 15, 20 minute drive. Um, Dreamscape manufactures class A type two custom print wall covering media for custom printing, for retail environments, commercial environments, and home interiors. Their mainline products from a PVC free standpoint 
Arterilon, which truly is the industry standard when it comes to paste up commercial grade wall coverings. Um, they have le offered lead credits for their product. It offers 31% recycled content. It's recycled water bottles that it's manufactured from. They offer three different textures to choose from uh, in their portfolio. And I know Sandy has used uh, all of them uh, in the past and or current. The other product that Dreamscape offers is a product called Nolar, and that is a non-PVC. It's made from wood pulp natural and natural fibers, and it, can say, it contains FSC sourced materials. So those are the two large uh, products within the Dream, Dreamscape portfolio uh, that meet the PVC free uh, applications. Just a quick photo example. This is uh, Google headquarters in San Francisco. This is on our Terralon Smooth. Here's another example, just a corner uh, waiting room area. This is at Lyft headquarters in San Francisco. Again, on our Terralon standard product. Pretty cool application here uh, where they change this graphic out on a quarterly basis, change in colors, change in theme and so on for their, for their waiting areas. This is an example of McDonald's. Uh, obviously, Dreamscape is um, head of the class when it comes to uh, supplying uh, materials for hospitality and retail and other office environments. And this is just an example of printed on one of our 30 plus uh, vinyl products. Um, they're all, again, made in the USA, feature low VOC formulations that comply with the California IAQ and Prop 65 uh, certifications. So Dreamscape also met the challenge to develop products for floors based on the needs of our social distancing communication for floors uh, since the uh, pandemic. And really important, I just wanted to show this because it's very important for retailers to understand slip certifications and pen the pendulum test, which is the newer uh, most reliable test is something that each of you should should double check to make sure your products have in fact been certified pendulum tested. All right, let's move on to Falcon Board. And Falcon Board, for those of you that don't or are not familiar with it, is it's a rigid honeycomb custom printable paper board. Uh, Hexacomb are the manufacturers of brown packaging grade materials. Um, so they do $170 million out of their nine locations of the brown honeycomb packaging grade materials. Maybe you've purchased a TV in the past or some breakable and inside the box or inside the packaging, you see that brown honeycomb. Well, that's really where Falcon, Falcon Board was birthed from, right? We had a, a honeycomb product and they started putting digital print facers on the top and bottom and have evolved into uh, different types of colors and so on for the digital print market. So the beauty of Falcon Board uh, really displaces PVC foam board. It's made with approximately 40% recycled content. They use SFI certified papers. Um, again, obviously made in the USA, nine plants. We make Falcon Board in four of their nine honeycomb plants today. Um, with the, the foresight and, and the hopefulness that more people evolve off of foam boards onto a product like Falcon Board so that we can start manufacturing Falcon Board in all nine plants. Um, again, as I mentioned, it's available in white, black, uh, and brown configurations, 3 16 to 4 inch thick. Uh, and again, having the plants, the amount of plants that we have in the U.S., to be able to manufacture Falcon Board, uh, as Wendy said earlier, we can get the product to you more on a regional basis versus shipping across the country or from another, another country. Here's just some applications, some ideas on Falcon Board. Obviously, interior signage is big uh, with Falcon Board displays, trade show booths, uh, exhibits, pop-up shops, you can even make use Falcon Board to make furniture and different applications. Uh, really a creative product you can work with. So this is my own little take on Falcon Board. Um, you know, it, we do offer a white craft white product. When I say that, it's white and top 
white top and white bottom printable facers and a brown core. I personally love the brown core product uh, for the simple fact that when this product goes to the recycle centers, obviously when you're done with it, blue bin, the recycle companies pick it up, waste management, waste connections, whoever that is, they bring it to the recycle center. And as the sorters are picking through the recyclables, we know that this brown core product is immediately recognized as a paper core get recyclable. That's one of the reasons we really like the, uh, the brown core. Just uh, some other examples of uh, custom print Falcon board. Here's an example inside Columbia stores. This is a uh, storefront and just want to show you the radius corners that you can do with it. All sorts of really unique applications that you can work with Falcon board. All right, let's move on to Packrite. Uh, so Packrite is kind of the new rigid paperboard manufacturer, uh, comparable to corrugate or cardboard type products. Uh, it's fluted material. Um, they have two distinct products. One is designed for indoor applications. It's called Digirite, and I'll talk a little bit about that moving forward. And the other product is called Aquarite, a rigid paperboard with a 90-day outdoor um, guarantee. It's made for outdoors. Really unique, really interesting. And we'll talk more about that here in a second. So you can see Packrite. It is a uh, national woman's uh, owned business. They're an ISO certified facility. Uh, they have F, both FSC and SFI chain of custody uh, certifications uh, and made in the USA. And Wendy, I'm sure we should talk about SGP here uh, short enough. And we'll move on, Digirite. So Digirite is our indoor product and it's a substitute for regular cardboard. So why do you need a regular cardboard substitute? It has top and bottom digital print facers. So it's not like your standard cardboard products. Prints beautifully is much more rigid than, than most in any other cardboard type product, fluted cardboard type product. Um, so it's 100% blue bin recyclable, really, really important. It's made with FSC and SFI certified papers. It's the lowest priced indoor rigid signage out there. Um, and one of the really cool things with Digirite is Packrite, the manufacturer of Digirite, can do custom things with this product for you. If you want a gold or metallic or rainbow or holographic uh, front side or front and back side, they can do all different types of custom things for you with some of the other ecological products that are on the market. All right, we'll move on to Aquarite. So Aquarite, if you can just think fluted plastic signage, we see it on every corner, everywhere we go. It's the campaign signage. It's the signage to stop by and buy something. It's whatever it is. And, and I have a friend that works for one of the major manufacturers. They make 27 truckloads of this stuff a day. This is a rigid paper board. It's 90 day outdoor rated. 100% blue bin recyclable, made with FSC and SFI certified papers, and really a product that's going to, to, to help our industry in the future. With that said, thank you very much, Jeff and Jackie, for the opportunity. Uh, we appreciate um, you putting this together. I've left my name and number and some, some contacts there as needed for people interested. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bob, appreciate it. Um, I just want to address one of the questions asked in the uh, chat was about downloading or uh, getting access to all the materials. Um, so all of the speakers that, that are presenting right now have sent them to us already. We're going to make them accessible to everybody after the webinar. So we'll follow up with you guys through email and we'll give you access to, to a link where you can download all these resources and all their uh, contact information too. So cool. Uh, with that said, I'm going to turn it over to Hope um, representing Mohawk. Um, thank you for joining us, Hope. Awesome, thanks so much. So many of the things that Wendy pointed out is considerations for choosing more sustainable media. Listen for those, because as I go through Zanita, I think you're gonna hear a lot of them mentioned. 
And um, so let me see if I can share my screen with you. Technology, let's see here. All right, so hopefully you guys can see this. And here we go, let's just jump right in. So thanks so much for allowing me to present Zanita Board today. I'm Hope Salters with Mohawk. We are the North American partner of Zanita out of South Africa. And feel free, I'll reference the website many times throughout, but it's just www.zanita.com. So let's just jump right in. We're gonna talk briefly about the product, the applications, and some of the resources that are available. So what is Zanita board? Zanita is a very lightweight UV inkjet printable board with a very high crush strength core, which differs it from mo many other products on the market. It is non-toxic, so no VOCs are admitted. It is direct printable, so you don't have to necessarily print something and then laminate it or mount it. You can print right on the board. You can design so that you can flat pack this product to save you in shipping. The product is 100% repulpable or recyclable after you use it. And it's also made from post-consumer recycled craft cardboard boxes. But Zanita is not cardboard and it is not timber. It has a crush strength of 5.6 tons per square foot in addition, it is flame resistant to international B3 standards. So let's actually take a look at some of the things that you may use Zanita for to give you the idea. In general, what, I, what comes to mind when I think of where you should use Zanita, because every product has its place, is really when you're thinking about doing 3D structural applications. So some of those may consist of exhibits or trade show displays. Remember those days when we got to go to trade shows? POS displays and pop-up shops, freestanding units. Um, the photo on the right is actually showing you ceiling beams and bulkheads. And then of course, things like furniture or three-door 3D signage. The product range itself, similar to what Bob was describing with that craft core. So you're gonna see similar to that. Um, there is- Let me just interrupt for a second. Of course. We're, we're stuck on, uh, the visual is stuck on the Zanita board. It's not showing what you're talking about. Oh no, thank you for telling me. No problem. Let's try to reshare. That's, that's better. That's Can you see it? Okay, when I flip slides, please let me know if that happens again. Um, the product range, there are two. There is Zanita Print, which is a white face. So the front and back are going to be white and then it has that craft core. And Zanita Craft, which is craft on the front and back as well as the craft core. Available in a 10 millimeter and a 16 millimeter four by eight foot and four by 10 foot boards. Zanita is really best used for what I would call temporary to semi-permanent structures and displays. It also provides acoustic properties. So if you're in an area that you need to um, get some sound absorption characteristics, Zanita is a great product. It's a truly sustainable alternative to MV MDF as well as foam boards. All right, I just switched slides. So if it didn't show up, let me know. Um, so next I wanna run through some images so that you can see it, some. It, it didn't switch. Okay, I had this problem once before and I don't know what the fix is. So we're just gonna have to do this in between. So I apologize. So here are some examples of Zanita board being used in trade shows and exhibit displays. For more inspiration, I would recommend going to zanita.com. There are sections upon sections of live images. Again, my apologies for my issue here, but we're going to just go this way. The next application is actually for shop fitting. So as you can see, it is safe to use LED lighting in conjunction with Zanita board. Um, feel free to check out Zanita as well as my personal LinkedIn and Instagram pages for images and videos, and you can look under hashtag Zanita. All right, here's the next slide of applications for you. So in this case, I wanted to show you some of the um, POS and NCAP displays, things like that. So Zanita board is very quick to, to assemble into freestanding units. 
Designers can certainly be very creative due to that crush strength. Again, 5.6 tons per square foot. So very, very strong product. And as you can see in the image on the right, yes, you can actually bend this board and get a shape out of it, which is a little different than anything else on the market. It can be, as I've mentioned before, flat packed. So it can easily be transported due to the weight being far lighter than solid board products. So you can save some time and money there as well. Now let's take a quick look at the competitive landscape. And so Zanita, which you can see Zanita next to a honeycomb type board, it is superior to um, the honeycomb in its strength. As you can see, it's a closed cell construction. It is going to, you know, if you've used a Falcon board in the past and it's worked really well for you, then that product is great for the application. But if you've had issues where maybe it didn't hold up quite as well as you would have liked or, or it didn't look the way that you wanted, Zanita might be something that you would consider because maybe you need something that's gonna be a little bit more durable. Um, it does have great printability, direct printability, and you're gonna get really clean cuts and folds as well with the Zanita. The other thing that I really wanna compare it to would be MDF. Or if you're using wood or metal or even plastic for some of your displays and different 3D structures. So Zanita can really be a substitute for those things. Um, it's very lightweight. It is recyclable as we discussed before and is disposable in that blue recycle bin when you're finished with it. So you can take it apart and reuse it again and again, but when you're finally finished, you can just put it in the recycle bin. It's also very easy to assemble. So depending on the design, you may require no extra parts. It may just be all part of the design, or it may be something where you use like nuts and bolts and a threaded rod, but there really should be no tools required when you're assembling most Zanita structures. And so the last part I wanna share with you today are some of the support that is provided if you're interested in Zanita. At that Zanita website, so zanita.com, I urge you to take a look at the CNC cut file store. So there are a lot of um, other designs that are already developed where you can download those and just add your artwork and they're ready to go. So I would start there. If that doesn't work and perhaps you see something you like, but maybe you need the shelf space a different size, something like that, or you just totally want to do something custom, Zanita does have designers on staff in South Africa that we can work through to help you get that perfect design, um, render, prototype, et cetera. Any 3D design software where will work, then the cut files are exported as Adobe Illustrator files and you just complete with your artwork layup. In addition, there is a Zanita Training Academy. So a lot of different resources on that website for you to check out. Now I'm actually going to jump out of my share screen and I wanna, since I have a couple minutes left, I just wanna show you a few things really quick. If you don't like that exposed edge, which like Bob said, I really like it because I think it shows you how sustainable the product is. You can buy and apply a PVC edging. So this is a black, it's available in a white and the 10 and the 16 millimeter and goes on just as easy as that. But keep in mind, it is made of PVC, so it's not recyclable. So if you want to recycle the unit, you're going to need to remove it first. The other things that you can do if you don't want to use the PVC and you don't want to show the edge, you can design around it. So you can do what we call V cuts so that you then can wrap around. You can do one V cut so that you then can have like a shelf, something like that. And then the last thing that I wanted to show you is actually how great it prints. So here's a board, instead of using like a metal or a wood or something like that, this is just direct printed on there and lightweight. So you can certainly do beautiful things like that. So that's what I have for you guys today. So back to you, Jeff. Thank you so much, Hope. Appreciate it. Awesome. Okay, so next we're going to turn it over to Jason Leonard. Uh, from Nina and uh, take it away, Jason. All right, thank you, Jeff. I really appreciate it. Um, first, I, I wanna thank Sandy Alexander for this, this time and the invite to come and speak to the Nina product line. Um, as always, you're on the uh, 
front edge of innovation. Um, also, thanks to the, our fellow uh, presenters here. I'm glad that I actually went third in the material segment um, because I, I've learned learned quite a bit, and it's great to see that you know great manufacturers are producing sustainable products because that's really what it's going to take. And 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 last, everybody that's on this call, thank you because you are the ones that are driving the industry towards more sustainable solutions um, every day and looking at options and uh, you know implementing them. So with that, I'm gonna jump into a little bit about Nina. Hopefully you are seeing my, my screen here. Um, if you're not familiar with Nina Paper, we are about a 200 year old printmaker. Um, it's been a long time in making paper. Um, so we've gotten very, very good at it with some of the best paper scientists and capabilities to make products very unpaper like that is solely made out of paper. So everything we do begins and ends with paper. Um, you see here, we, you know, last year, the FSC Leadership Award, all of our certifications, recyclable, renewable, FSC, um, all, everything that we, we manufacture our papers with our FSC and sustainably harvested materials. Um, for me personally, um, you know, I joined Nina after close to 20 years in commercial print and wide format space, um, simply because I saw that there was a much smarter, better way to do things. And after having years of relationship with Nina, understanding what was capable and where they were going, um, you know, I made the decision to move to Nina. So I'm responsible for our wide format business development. In the hey, South Jason, East. sorry to interrupt, but we're not seeing your screen if you're sharing something. Oh, you're not? Nope. Let's try that again. There we go. Looks ah, like it's loading. I wasn't sharing anything terribly important yet, so we're okay. Um, so thanks, Jeff. Um, so yeah, for, for me, I'm thrilled to be here. Um, I also handle all of our technical support nationwide, which is really one of the most fun parts of my job because I get to do all of the all of the work that pushes the envelope to do more than you know more more than what's expected out of a product. Sometimes making really creative. Uh, products and, and, and using um, technology, pushing the envelope to what you can do on paper. So some of the things that we, you know, in the sustainable market as manufacturers are, are up against are common misconceptions when, when you talk about sustainable, recyclable products. And we, we hear this as manufacturers and printers, um, you know, things like the print quality may suffer moving to a responsible product. It may be less durable. It's going to be cost prohibitive. It's one that we hear often and also limited access, meaning you may not be able to acquire it for the, the, the speed to market that you need. Um, and the reason I call it the misconceptions is that's what we build our model on as to how we produce products. There are three primary characters characteristics in our wide format line that we're very proud of. The first is clearly sustainability. Everything we do is cellulose based. Uh, most everything is recyclable and everything is biodegradable, all PVC free, acid free, um, and different levels of post consumer waste. When I talk about products, I'll talk a little more about that. But the second, the second criteria is performance. Um, you know, the sustainability is great, but the product not only needs to perform as well as the standard replacement it's replacing, but it has to outperform it. You know, we understand that we're in some regards an underdog as a sustainable product moving into a heavily plastics world. So we, we have to outperform what it's replacing. And I think you know, our, the, my fellow two, two presenters here both talked about how beautiful it prints. And that's such a luxury of paper in how well it prints, um, which really helps with uh, high performance. But it also has to perform in the production environment well. We have to reduce waste. We have to speed up print times. We have to speed up cut times. Um, and the third is cost. Um, both of those criteria don't do any good if it doesn't, if, if it doesn't fit into the budget that you're trying to meet. So, you know, as, as Nina, we, we produce our products. Um, cost is, you know, is, is um, driven both by the cost of material, but also in the uh, cost of ownership of, again, those two either items, those, those uh, limited waste and speed of production to offset that, to make it obtainable for uh, what would be a plastics job to move to a sustainable paper. Um, I'm going to jump into a few a few products. Three of our, our newer our newer products. Um, Going to give you a little bit of little detail on those. Our um, what I would call our flagship product is our ImageMax, and uh, ImageMax is a new product released this year, the beginning of this year. 
it's a styrene alternative that is 100% blue bin recyclable, um, which is very impressive life cycle analysis numbers. And you know, what this product is, is made to do is to replace styrene. And uh, you know, styrene in some cases is 50% of product used by many end users in national campaigns. And styrene will never leave this planet, um, no matter what happens with it recycled or not, it's a plastic product that does not go away. Um, ImageMax, because of that amazing science that Nina knows, is a paper product that looks, feels, and acts like styrene for interior use and undercover exterior use. Uh, it is a fantastic replacement for styrene, one millimeter PVC, as well as rigid roll vinyls. Um, it's available both in a, a roll, in a, our 010 thickness, and sheets um, from our 020 to 040, and we even make a smart yield sheet, which is a 50 by 100, which just allows for even more waste savings by getting better yields per, per sheet. Um, it's a really exciting product and it has an enormous potential to really cut into the amount of styrene that we're leaving behind on the planet. It's, it's printability is, is amazing. Um, it's uh, the natural process of, of, of paper allows for a little ink bleed. It's just an elegant, fine finish, even at high print speeds. So opposed to styrene, which isn't a very good print surface, ImageMax really excels. You end up with a far cleaner, better finished product. The next product I'll touch on is our Digiscape footprint. Um, this is a, a new product that is, um, it's a single step, meaning you do not need to laminate it. You can latex or UV print directly to it uh, for a floor graphic application. Um, it is completely cellulose based, it has a latex saturation for a six month life indoors under heavy traffic. Um, it's both UL 410 and, and ANSI certified for wet and dry applications uh, for non-slip. And one of the really neat aspects of this product is since it is cellulose based, it's breathable, which means air will pass through from behind it to the front. So as you're installing a floor graphic, you're, you know, nearly anybody can put it down cleanly without wrinkles and bubbles and still have a clean removal when the campaign is complete. It, it gives the new option to go oversized on your floor graphics. If you wanna go four feet by three feet and incorporate uh, end user branding into directional safety signage, you can, and it can still be simply installed. And it has 30% post-consumer waste inside of it, which is cellulose-based post-consumer waste. The third product here in our retail visual marketing series is our wipe clean and wipe clean is based off of our convert board, which is a fluted printable both sides blue bin recyclable structural board. Um, our wipe clean is a variation of that where we have coated both sides so that it can be washed and you common disinfectants used on it like Lysol. So if you think about things like floor standing point of purchase displays, countertop displays, gift card holders, um, things that are heavy touch areas. Um, so it, it just gives that, you know, grocery store, gas station, or whatever it may be, the ability to just, just wipe it down. And in, in our current environment, being able to wipe things down is a big, a big benefit. Being able to wipe down a recyclable paper is really a huge benefit. Uh, when the product is done, it can be put right in a recycle bin in the corner, um, or even if it ends up in landfill, it will completely break down into nothing as all of our products do. Um, our, our next product line is our, um, our wallpaper line. Uh, as a lot of you probably know, the wall covering market has really grown immensely since, since COVID and before, but COVID definitely sped it up. A lot of DIY projects, a lot of uh, new builds that have continued on. Um, and our Digiscape wallpaper line is a very successful, one of our largest lines of complete cellulose-based latex saturated wallpapers. Um, it's all 30% post-consumer waste. It's available three different basic ways. Um, it's a Digiscape Stick R, which is a self-adhesive. So it's a removable self-adhesive, which is a great alternative to vinyls, uh, also for DIY projects. Our type two, which is our commercial paste-based product available in two thicknesses to meet any budget and two different surfaces. And our type two, which is our, our commercially certified type two uh, product available in 17 mil, both smooth and sand pebble. All of them 
print beautifully because of the nature of paper. They're very easy to install because of the breathability and they're completely PVC free. So there's no harm, no risk of putting it in your nursery, in your medical center, in your school, anywhere. It's a completely safe, reliable, wonderful product. So with that, I saw Jeff's camera come back on, so I must be out of time. I thank you for your time and I'll hand it back. Thank you so much, Jason, appreciate it. I guess uh, everybody is, is getting when I pop up, it's, uh, it's towards the end of the time limit. So um, thanks for adhering to that, uh, to everybody who's speaking today. All right, so next um, we've got Wes uh, Cheringal from Axis Global. Uh, one of our logistics partners, uh, we figured we'd close it out with them just because it's, you know, uh, supply chain going um, from production all the way to the end uh, and has to do a lot uh, with responsibility and, and recycling. So turn it over to you, Wes. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Jeff. And uh, thank you, Mike Graff and Sandy for inviting us here. Uh, I'm actually with Nick Cheringal, who uh, is uh, a part of our green initiative. He's a uh, really the next generation leading the charge uh, for us in this area. So, uh, you know, it's time for youth to start getting involved more. Um, I'm gonna share my screen. Uh -oh. what do I do Nick? <laughs> All right, he's got me the kid. Okay, um, hopefully everybody can see our screen. Um, so, uh, we, uh, we, we have a little bit of a different approach to, uh, uh, to uh, you know, the marketplace and to visual marketing than uh, some of our other uh, uh, participants here today, as we are on the logistics side of the business. And we've been working very hard to create a logistics solution which promotes sustainability and corporate responsibility. Um, as uh, most of you know, what corporate responsibility represents, uh, it's a commitment to sound business practices with respect to social, economic, and environmental factors. And in today's conversation, we're speaking primarily about environmental factors. Um, what we've learned and what we all see every day in the media is you know, a tremendous uh, uh, migration to sustainable solutions for all types of companies and in all industries. Uh, you see Amazon making big commitments in this area. And I think all, uh, all businesses are aware that their consumers are very focused on this and are making buying decisions based on their perception of a company's commitment to this area. Our goal is to create a closed loop supply chain, which basically uh, starts at the beginning with respect to design and fabrication of visual elements. And obviously a lot of what we heard about today um, goes speaks to that, uh, the different types of substrates that are used, um, uh, the type of printing methods that are used, but beyond printed material, we deal tremendously in um, uh, visual elements like store fixtures, um, cash register wraps, plexi that's going in now for, um, for COVID protection, many different parts of, um, of a retail environment in addition to print. So we're looking to work with our clients to create through partnerships with companies like Sandy and some of the other partners that are on this call today to create the opportunity to design and fabricate with recycling and reuse in mind so that ultimately we can get to zero landfill for uh, the projects that uh, uh, become obsolete. So incorporating uh, three different elements of our business, uh, we have our green solutions group, which basically uh, manages the, you know, the final disposition and all of the reporting around these programs a creative group that works with our partners to help design things in a sustainable way, and our logistics group, which actually gets their hands dirty and handles the transportation, installation, deinstallation, and disposition of the material. Quickly, uh, just to give you a little overview on the logistics side of things, um, you know, we are using logistics as, I'm sorry, we're using logistics as a way to uh, uh, start the process in a sustainable and, and a uh, impactful way. So things like decentralizing warehousing, not using one warehouse to distribute from uh, for the entire country, which you know translates into transportation going from a warehouse potentially 3,000 miles away. We're repositioning product in warehouses that are closer to the main business centers around the country so that these are short hops to the um, you know, to the downtown areas of, uh, of the different cities. So reducing carbon footprint, number of trucks on the road, 
other and, 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 and you know other things outside of environmental impact is just speed to market and better reaction time. Um, we're uh, in the process of having our uh, warehouse facilities Energy Star rated, um, which will give us uh, the ability to measure our impact internally in our business and ultimately that um, impacts uh, all of your contribution in this effort. Other areas where logistics can be valuable um, are freight consolidation. Obviously, we want uh, trucks to travel with full loads of, of material so where we can consolidate from multiple vendors to make one full transportation event rather than partials um, so we can you know, accomplish the same goals of carbon uh, footprint reduction. We're also transitioning um, in our major markets to hybrid vehicles. So for local shipments, um, you know, for example, from New Jersey to Manhattan, we're using hybrid vehicles as opposed to gas engines. Um, in addition to retail, we're servicing hospitality, building management, financial institutions, really anybody that has a physical location that has uh, changeable uh, uh, marketing and visual elements in their, in their property. With respect to creative group, with respect to what we're doing on the design side, as I mentioned, uh, we're looking to create uh, the, uh, the products that you're using every day in a sustainable way. And that can consist of things like uh, reduction of adhesives, um, reducing the use of MDF, um, uh, trying to prevent things to be cross-contaminated. So you could have three or four different, different raw elements that are easily recycle, recyclable when they're separated, but if they're created in such a way that they're bonded to each other, um, you know, you lose the ability and the benefit um, and you're not able to recycle those. We do have other solutions when things are not recyclable, which uh, is clean waste to energy. And that's something that is kind of the catch-all um, uh, to eliminate anything going into a landfill, but ultimately we rather reuse and recycle. That's the, that's the first uh, primary objective. Um, from the from the respect of Green Solutions, which is the group that Nick runs that manages the day to day operations of this, um, we're dealing with all the things that uh, that we talked about earlier on this call. So it's seasonal change outs, um, inventory refreshes, store refreshes, pop up stores, store closures, um, graphic recycling. So all of these things that are constantly changing in a store environment, uh, we want to divert that from the landfill and look for opportunities to, uh, to give them a second life. Um, so, uh, you know, in, in managing these programs, the most important thing in the end is to be able to validate um, the usefulness and validate that we are accomplishing our goals. Um, sometimes there is a cost, uh, an incremental cost to a client and, um, and most clients understand that and are willing to uh, consider that incremental cost, but we need to be able to prove that we're really accomplishing what we need to. So there's reporting and metrics that go along so that we can measure the results and really um, analyze where uh, we can improve. And the goal obviously is to improve year over year and show that uh, we're, we're increasing the, um, uh, the value of this program. So uh, basically with uh, the programs that we've been handling uh, over the past year or so, we've been able to divert up to 100% of, uh, of the material from landfill. Um, so, uh, you know, it's, it's a combination of different ways to approach these things. We like to start with donation wherever that's possible. And there's a lot of uses for some of this uh, material in a secondary life uh, from a donation standpoint. Um, you know, mannequins can be donated to schools, um, to, to uh, uh, you know, other uh, smaller businesses that may be uh, challenged to, uh, to purchase these, uh, uh, these props. Um, there's opportunity to donate um, things like carpeting, um, certain fabrics and materials, um, wood. Uh, we do quite a bit of donation of wood to Habitat for Humanity. Uh, we do quite a bit with uh, Salvation Army as well. Um, so there's, there's tremendous opportunity for donation. Um, and when that, uh, you know, is not a, uh, a viable solution, uh, there may be opportunities to reuse materials within your own organization. And then, of course, recycling is, is really where the majority and the bulk of the, uh, of the material goes. Lastly, for anything that can't be satisfied by, it, by any other channels, uh, we go waste to energy, which is basically incineration to clean energy. And this is something that is, um, is actually a very clean solution, uh, much, much cleaner than uh, a landfill 
and something that um, you know really helps, uh, especially in our industry where it's really not that simple to recycle some of these items. It gives us that last resort, if you will. So typically, uh, as part of the um, uh, you know analysis that we do, as I mentioned, uh, you know we we give a, 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 a analytics to show where all of the elements went. Um, you know, in this example, this was a, uh, a small breakdown that we did of, uh, I guess, about 10 uh, stores or so where there were some uh, window displays that were coming out of stores. So as you can see, we were able to accomplish quite a bit um, in terms of uh, repurposing, reusing, and recycling these elements. So this is the ultimate goal. Um, it's something that, um, you know, continues to be a passion for our clients and obviously for our business. Uh, we feel that you know we're able to bring uh, real value um, to our clients in this uh, in this initiative, and um, it certainly is something that you know we can all feel good about at the end of the day that, that we accomplished something very positive. So thank you uh, again for your time. I see Jeff and Mike both popping on, so I must really be over if Mike popped on too. Um, we appreciate your time and your attention, and uh, and uh, please stay healthy through this uh, difficult time. Thank you, Wes. Appreciate it. Um, so we, we did go just slightly over. I wanted to open up the floor for questions. We had uh, a few that were in, in the chat. Um, unfortunately, we had the hard cut off at three. We sent most of you guys, or if not all of you, should have gotten the uh, hour, um, hourglass. So uh, we're going we're gonna to hold ourselves to it. We're going to end at three sharp. Um, so I just wanted to bring Mike in for some uh, closing uh, statement and um, we're going to reach out to you guys individually. We have your emails from registration. So we'll get you guys the answers to the questions that you asked in the chat. Um, appreciate you guys all attending today. Mike. Well, normally, normally at this point, uh, I say the bar is open and we head over. So unfortunately, it breaks my heart not to be in that position. Second, this kind of feels like the presidential debates. Um, I know we're closing on in two minutes. I'm going to defer my time. We had one Q&A from John Dalmage. And since he was the one that submitted a question, I think he's entitled to a response. So I'm going to yield my time and say a very quick thank you to the panelists. You guys were great. And uh, thank you very much to the clients, of course. So uh, I think someone is going to respond. Bob, you're going to respond to John's request. Yeah, I think Bob uh, flagged the question. He'd like to answer it. So, Bob, are you with us? Yes. Uh, I'm here. I, I don't see me up on the screen, but uh, um, can, can someone read that off real quick? So the question was um, on DigiWrite. Can we specify if we want it to be FSC or SFI certified? Our team prefers FSC. Yeah, so the product is actually manufactured with both FSC and SFI certified papers. Um, so as far as specifying one or the other, it's made with, with both of those certified papers. So I'm unsure as to whether or not we can actually get it specified for one or the other. I, I would have to check that. Okay, well, we can certainly get that answer back, but it, it might be answering his question by the answer is yes, it is certified uh, yes. for them. So, but we can get further information. And with that, I'll say thank you. Uh, everyone stay safe, vaccines on the way, and the bar will be open next, next uh, event we have. Looking forward to it, Mike. Okay, thanks everyone, have a great day. See you guys. Thank you. Thank you everybody.